Assalamu alaikum. Single phase induction motors are the most widely used motors for home appliances. And uh, in today's lecture, we shall learn the working of single phase induction motor. Before we start our discussion on single phase induction motors, let's revisit our understanding about three phase induction motors. A three phase induction motor has a stator, and on this stator, we have a set of three phase coils. These uh, coils are placed 120 degrees apart from each other, and uh, these are supplied with three phase currents. And we know that uh, when three phase currents flow uh, in uh, these uh, set of three phase coils, that produces a rotating magnetic field, uh, Vs. This ro rotating magnetic field rotates with the synchronous speed, and this synchronous speed is determined by the uh, frequency of currents which are flowing in these coils, and also depends upon the number of poles. The machine, which is shown over here, uh, has a single set of three phase coils and is called a two poles machine. The uh, rotor of uh, this uh, induction motor, most commonly utilized uh, rotor, is the cage rotor, which is a cylindrical rotor made up of ferromagnetic material and is laminated to minimize eddy current and uh, hysteresis losses. And on this uh, rotor, we have uh, uh, bars of conducting uh, material placed in the notches which are curved along the uh, surface of this rotor. This rotating magnetic field links with uh, these uh, bars, conducting bars which are placed on the rotor and due to relative motion between the conductors and this rotating magnetic field, voltage is induced in these conductors. And these conducting bars, these are shorted at both ends by shorting rings. And therefore, due to the induced voltage, current starts flowing in these conducting bars. And therefore, due to current in these conducting bars, there is a magnetic field of this rotor, which is denoted by BR. And uh, now there are two magnetic fields, BR and BS. The interaction of these two magnetic fields, uh, a torque is induced, which we know is given by this relation. So now let's talk about single phase induction motors. A rotor of a single phase induction motor is uh, uh, similar to rotor of a, a three phase induction motor. It is a cage rotor, cylindrical rotor with conducting bars placed on it, and uh, these conducting bars are shorted at both ends. The stator of single phase induction motor is different from the stator of uh, three phase induction motor. Over here, we have uh, uh, only single phase coils uh, with multiple turns, of course, and these uh, coils are connected with a single phase voltage source. That is, in these coils, single phase current is flowing, which is given by this re relation. Over here, I have taken cosine of omega t. This is also a sinusoidal signal. You can even take uh, sine omega t. Uh, this does not make any difference. This only changes the reference time that we, we are taking. So uh, due to this current, which flows in this coil, single phase current, a uh, stator magnetic field is produced. What is the uh, direction of that stator magnetic field can be determined by the right hand rule. For example, if a current uh, in these conductors is flowing in this direction, that is, current is entering into this coil from here uh, and then leaving the coil from uh, this end, then the uh, flux density vector, uh, the direction of flux density vector is towards right. This is the stator magnetic field, Ds direction of this stator magnetic field. What about magnitude of this stator magnetic field? Magnitude of this stator magnetic field that is dependent upon magnitude of the current. That is Bs uh, that is equal to B maximum into cosine omega t. That is magnitude of this flux density vector that is changing. At omega t equal to zero its magnitude is Bm 
at omega t equal to pi by 2, its magnitude is 0. However, it is not rotating, it is always in this direction. Uh, and of course, uh, corresponding to omega t equal to minus 180 degrees, uh, its uh, direction is in this uh, direction. However, it can still be taken as in this di direction with a negative magnitude. So this is not a rotating magnetic field, it is only pulsating magne uh, magnetic field. So uh, what will happen to uh, these conductors? Uh, is there an induced voltage? So we know that voltage induced, E induced, that is given by V cross D dot L. Where V is velocity of conductors relative to this flux density vector. Now this flux density vector is not rotating, therefore there is no relative motion between these conductors and this flux density vector. No relative motion means no voltage will be induced in these conductors due to this phenomena. Uh, however, voltage will be induced in these conductors because of another phenomena. We know that if a changing flux links with a conductor that also induces a voltage in those conductors that is E induced uh, that is dependent upon the rate of change of flux it is proportional to rate of change of flux here magnitude of flux density vector is changing changing that means flux flowing through this machine that is also changing and here is a voltage induced in these conductors due to ch uh, changing flux. This is the same phenomena which occurs in the transformers, changing flux in the primary windings that induces a voltage in secondary windings. Similarly, changing voltage in these uh, conductors that will induce voltage in these conductors. And uh, uh, due to that induced voltage, current will start flowing in these conductors and that current uh, is given by this direction. So due to induced voltage in these conductors, current will start flowing in these conductors uh, because these conductors are shorted at uh, both the ends and therefore current will start flowing in these conductors. And due to this current in these conductors, magnetic field of the rotor will be produced. Again, we can determine the direction of this magnetic field by the right hand rule, uh, current is entering in these conductors uh, and leaving from these conductors. So magnetic field, rotor magnetic field, that is also in this direction, Vs. What will be induced torque? Uh, so induced torque is given by this relation. What we observe is that B, uh, sorry, it is Br, rotor magnetic field. What we observe is that both Br and Bs are parallel to each other. Therefore, their cross product is equal to zero. So, although current is flowing in the rotor windings due to this phenomena, uh, but still no torque is induced. So, what will happen to the rotor? It will not rotate because induced torque is equal to zero. However, there is one thing which is practically observed. What is that? If you give an initial push to this rotor, the, the induced torque becomes non-zero and uh, this uh, rotor starts rotating and this uh, uh, induction motor starts working. So how to explain this phenomena? Uh, the phenomena is clear. Uh, if this rotor is stationary, induced torque is equal to zero. But however, if you give it an initial push, then induced torque becomes non-zero and this motor starts working. How to explain this phenomena? To explain this uh, phenomena, there are uh, two most popular theory uh, we shall uh, study uh, the first one that is the double revolving field theory. According to this double revolving field theory, we can decompose this uh, stationary but pulsating magnetic field into two components, one rotating in clockwise direction and other rotating in counterclockwise direction. Let's elaborate this point with the help of diagrams. So we have uh, this uh, stator magnetic field, Bs. It can be decomposed into two magnetic fields. Uh, 
B1 rotating in clockwise direction and other rotating in counterclockwise direction. Uh, let's verify this uh, point at different time instants. Uh, at uh, omega t equal to 0, uh, omega t equal to 0, what will be magnitude of bs? Uh, magnitude of bs, which will, that will be equal to bm cosine of omega t. Uh, so at this time instant, this is obviously true. Uh, we have uh, split this uh, vector into two vectors with magnitude equal to half of this magnitude. So at this time instant, it is obviously true. At next time instant, omega t equal to 45 degrees. So what will be magnitude of bs? Its direction will be still the same. Uh, what will be magnitude of bs at this time instant? Uh, cosine of uh, 45 degrees, what is that? Cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over square root of uh, 2 and bm. So this is bs, magnitude smaller than this one at this time instant. Uh, this vector, the uh, clockwise, of the same length, b, uh, this b counterclockwise, this length is equal to the same length that is uh, it is half bm half bm uh, and this is uh, this vector which has rotated by 45 degrees again its magnitude uniform equal to half bm uh, rotated by 45 degrees so we can verify that again the vector sum of these two flux density vectors that is equal to uh, the same vector. So at this time instant, again uh, this is true. That is, their phasor sum is equal to the, uh, this uh, Bs. Next, verify it for the next time instant. That is, omega t equal to 90 degrees. Uh, at omega t equal to 90 degrees, what is magnitude of Bs? Cosine of omega 90 degrees, that is 0. Therefore, Bs is equal to 0. And this vector has now rotated by five, uh, another 45 degrees. That is, it has reached over here. And this has also rotated by another 45 degrees. This has been rotated to this location. This has rotated to this point. What is vector sum of these two? Again, that is equal to uh, 0. That corresponds to omega t equal to uh, omega t equal to 90 degrees. Uh, you can verify it for other time instants as well. For example, at omega t equal to omega t equal to 135 degrees. Corresponding to this time instant, this vector would have rotated to this angular position, uh, rotating in a clockwise direction, and this one would have rotated to this position. And again, your phasor sum is this one which is equal to, you can verify that cosine of uh, 135 degrees, what is that? That is equal to minus 1 over square root of 2, so negative sign over here. It has, it is, it is directed in opposite direction, which is the same as the same vector uh, in this direction with opposite uh, sign with magnitude. Uh, and again at omega t equal to 180 degrees, uh, you will verify uh, this situation, you can verify this situation at omega t equal to 180 degrees, this vector would have rotated to this position and this one, the second one would also have rotated to this position, your sum will be uh, this one with magnitude equal to minus bm, magnitude equal to minus bm. That is this magnetic field, which is not rotating, it is pulsating, its magnitude is pulsating, this can be decomposed into two vectors, flux density vectors, one rotating in clockwise direction and the other 
uh, rotating in counterclockwise direction. We can also verify it mathematically. Uh, what we see is that uh, this flux density vector Vs, uh, its magnitude is Vm cosine omega t and its direction is in this direction. Uh, let's uh, denote the unit vector in this direction with i hat. And uh, over here, this vector v clockwise that uh, can be uh, v, that is given by uh, Vm cosine omega t i hat minus 1 by 2 sine omega t j hat. This is a flux density vector phasor which, which has a magnitude half of this and is rotating in a clockwise direction. The other one is this one. This is a phasor with magnitude uh, equal to uh, half of this mag Vm and is rotating in counterclockwise direction. Uh, we can easily see that their vector sum that is equal to this term will be cancelled out with this one uh, and half uh, Vm cosine omega t half Vm cosine omega t that is equal to Vm cosine omega t i hat. So uh, this flux density vector which is not rotating it is stationary but it is pulsating that can be decomposed into two vectors in two flux density vectors one rotating in clockwise direction and other rotating in counterclockwise direction. So this uh, double revolving field theory states that this motor uh, responds to each of these two rotating magnetic fields. Here in case of three phase induction motors we had only one rotating magnetic field Bs. Here we have two rotating magnetic fields uh, B counterclock B clockwise and B counterclockwise and this motor responds to two magnetic fields independently. So what will be the overall torque speed characteristics? For three phase induction motor we have uh, seen the torque speed characteristics and those torque speed characteristics were given by this curve. On, on this axis we have the speed of the motor and on this axis we have uh, induced torque. And uh, for a uh, three phase induction motor, uh, here there was only one rotating magnetic field, we had these torque speed characteristics. These were the torque speed characteristics for three phase induction motor where there was only one magnetic field, rotating magnetic field. Here there are two rotating magnetic fields that is this can be decomposed into two rotating magnetic fields and the motor responds to both of these rotating magnetic fields. So for the one which is rotating in a uh, counterclockwise direction we have these torque speed characteristics and for the other uh, which is rotating in clockwise direction we should have similar torque speed characteristics but flipped over that is uh, we have these torque speed characteristics torque speed characteristics corresponding to the component uh, rotating in clockwise di counterclockwise direction and torque speed characteristics corresponding to component which is rotating in clockwise direction so what is uh, what are the overall torque speed characteristics that can be obtained by adding the two torque speed characteristics? So if you add these uh, two graphs, you have uh, uh, almost this one. This is hand sketch. Uh, however, you will get almost these types of torque speed characteristics for single phase induction motor. From here, we observe that when this rotor is stationary that is corresponding to zero speed induced torque is equal to zero however once you give it an initial push that is it gets some speed induced torque becomes non-zero and then it keeps it rotating uh, for example if uh, you have connected some load to this rotor and you give uh, an initial push then uh, this uh, 
uh, will finally uh, start running at a speed at which the load torque will become equal to the induced torque. Uh, another observation is that this rotor will start rotating in the same direction in which it is given an initial push. That is, if it is given initial push in this direction, it will start rotating at this steady state uh, speed. Uh, and if it is given uh, initial push in opposite direction, it will start running in the opposite direction with the same uh, steady state velocity at which the load torque will become equal to the induced torque. So this is simplest single phase induction motor and this uh, single phase induction motor is associated with two problems. One problem is that it is not self-starting, you have to give it an initial push. Uh, the second uh, problem is uh, uh, due to this pulsating magnetic field, uh, the induced torque will also be pulsating that will not be uniform uh, that uh, in case of uh, this three phase induction motor induced torque was uniform over here induced torque will not be a uniform uh, uh, torque and that will result into excessive vibrations so how to resolve these problems uh, we shall study three different arrangements which are utilized uh, to make these motors self starting and uh, to uh, reduce the vibrations which are there in this simple single phase induction motor. Uh, another very important uh, point which I just uh, missed over here in this discussion is that in obtaining the overall torque speed characteristics we have applied superposition theorem that is we have sketched torque speed characteristics for uh, corresponding to one component of uh, stator magnetic field which was rotating in counterclockwise direction we have sketched uh, the uh, this uh, torque speed characteristics uh, corresponding to the component of flux density vector which was rotating in clockwise direction and the overall torque speed characteristics were obtained by adding the two torque speed characteristics this uh, superposition is only applicable to linear systems uh, and for linear systems, we can independently study the response of that system corresponding to one input and uh, then study the response of the system corresponding to second input and then add them together to get the overall response when both of the inputs are there. However, this single phase induction motor is not a linear device. Uh, it does not follow the superposition theorem. Therefore, the overall torque speed characteristics are not exactly uh, uh, the uh, sum of these two torque speed characteristics. Uh, rather, this, uh, these torque speed characteristics are slightly distorted from this one, and the torque speed characteristics of the single in phase induction motor those look like this one. So, this axis is the speed of the motor, and this axis is induced torque. Uh, we can observe that again, corresponding to stationary. Uh, condition of stator induced torque is zero. Once it gets initial push, uh, induced torque becomes non-zero and the motor starts working. Uh, where is this speed? This one? This is synchronous speed. Synchronous speed of what? We have decomposed this stator magnetic field into two components uh, and the, each component was rotating with synchronous speed. Synchronous speed determined by frequency of the electrical signals uh, which are applied to these coils. Uh, 